All right, this is uh, part three uh, of the series. Um, just getting into Lady Liberty. Not sure what the title's going to be, but uh, this is part three, the third video on uh, Lady Liberty. Uh, the brother was uh, was going to go into a point uh, when I was last speaking, um, getting into a few scripts. Um, brother's going to go into a point. What was that? What was I mean, uh, basically, you know, get the scripture on that pride uh, go, um, goes before with destruction, man. So right. this place, America, is known as, you know, the pro uh, a powerful place, man, you know. Home of the brave, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know the the, the Marines. The, That's right. The, the proud, the fruit, the, the, the few, the proud, the, the Marines. Marines. Yeah, yeah. The point the proud. Yep. You know, the Marines is the military of the you know yep. America, man. That's right. So, you know, going into this is Proverbs chapter sixteen, verse eighteen. Pride goeth before destruction. Yep. And the hearty spirit before a fall. That's right. So, a hearty is another word for proudful, man. So, this place is very puffed up and and prideful with their head up. Uh, calling themselves high esteem, you know, yep. you know, being self-proclaimed, you know, uh, so you know that that prideful spirit comes before a fall, man. All right, because when you have that prideful spirit, you're not looking over your shoulder for any danger, man. That's and, right. But there's danger coming to America, man. That's right. right? Like I said, everybody's always saying in all the videos, man. Thermonuclear missiles is coming to this place because of the pride. The Lord is going to destroy it. For uh for the for its pride, man. All right, it's gonna right. have the same judgment as Sodom and Gomorrah, man. That's right. That's right. That's one hundred percent right, bro. And um, I wanted to go into a, another script, you know, um, and this is just getting into the fact when we when we started these uh, the series was getting into Lady Liberty and the blasphemies that's on on that poem that's that's um that's on um the Statue of Liberty, uh -huh. you know, um, and there's a lot of symbolization around the country, you know. And that shows this. And I saw one time of a video that uh, the 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 uh, apostles did before, and it was in New York City. I'm not quite sure where it was at, but it was in New York City. There was a statue. Get into the scripture we're about to read, and it, it showed a um, a, a so-called Native American, you know, a, a Gadite, um, or, or 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 it could have been a, 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 um, a Reubenite, but it was a Native American um, actually in chains, and and it showed a, a Edomite, so-called white person. On a horse, and they were on the horse, and the Gadite was in chains, walking on the ground as the Edomite was was on the horse, actually riding, you know, going wherever they were going. And yeah, and on, and on the other side was a so-called Negro man. Okay, good point. Like, yeah, you, you blacks, man. So it was showing you that we're the same people. We went through the same thing. So you, absolutely, so-called Negroes. Uh, you know, ben, uh, Benjamin, which is you know West Indies, mm -hmm. and you Haitians, mm -hmm. and you uh, black Americans, mm -hmm. which are, you are, you know, the House of Judah. All That's right. right. Uh, and then the the uh, which is you are the southern kingdom, and then you have the northern kingdom, mm -hmm. uh, the the North American Indians, you Latinos, man, yep. on on in chains, um, from this uh, so called white man that was on the horse, man. Yep. This horse represents power, man. That's right. And he he was in a high power seat to rule over you guys, man. The, All right. No, that's right. That's right. I just want to um say uh real quick, the brother said that the horse uh, represents uh power. And it does. And and one of the things about it, I know in the movie, uh, we was chopping it up a little bit ago, the movie Django, when Django was coming into, um, he, he was with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and um, they were going into Candyland, I believe it was, as they were riding in, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, you know, uh, we know that he was the house nigga, when he was coming out with the master, he said, he said, uh, he said, master, who is that nigga on that horse? And the master kept talking and doing what he was doing, he says, but who is that nigga on that horse as they was riding up? Because, see, even going back in, 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 into the times just a few hundred years ago, horses have always symbolized a, 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 a power. Time. You know? So him being on a horse, um, him being um, a so-called black man, being on a horse two, three hundred years ago was something that was, that was you know, kind of look, looked at as, why would they be on a horse? That's symbolic of power. And you're right. sitting up in a higher seat when you're on a horse. Because we, we were slaves, man. That's right. And slaves have no power against their oppressor, man. That's right. right. That's right. So, like Rose said, when he was on that horse, um, they looked at him because uh, uh, the horse represented uh, power, you being in, in, in a higher class. In That's right. Time, right. That's right. So, you know, at, um, you know with that... Uh, that so that Edomite that was on that horse with the two uh, with the Gadite and the so called Negro, yep. showing you that that he had power over those two uh, those two people, man, which are the same people of the nation of Israel. That's right. right. So called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Yep, that's right. That's right. And the scriptures talk about it too, man. Yep, we gonna get into that actually. 
And this is um, going into that. Um, this is uh, Ecclesiastes 10, and I'm going to start at verse 6. Read, read down to 7. So this is Ecclesiastes 10 and 6. It says, Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low, in low places. I'll, I'll read that again. Ecclesiastes 10 and 6. It says, Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low places. Now, now I'm just say something. Yeah, what? It says, The folly is set in great dignity in America is known for folly, man. That's All right. right. You know, useful, you know, unuseful, vain um, activities, man. That's All right. right. Folly is set in great dignity, is held up high, mm -hmm. held at esteem. All right. So, and the rich sit in low places, man. All right. Who are the rich? You so called Israelites. And what are you rich in? You're rich in spirit, man. You know, rich, rich in the soul, as Jake likes to say, man. All right, you are you are spiritually rich, man, but you are poor here because you have no no income, no real income. You're not uh, no wealth, no land. That, that's right. That true substance. Right. You don't have that, man. So that's how you you're rich but poor, man. And, and and most importantly, you don't have the true riches, which is the scriptures. Kind. You kind. know what I'm saying? You don't have knowledge of who you are. Kind. You know what I'm saying? You don't know who your power is. So not knowing that and not having that. Also shows that 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 Jay, you 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 so called Black Hispanic and Native Americans, you you, um, you uh, twelve tribes, you true people of the, of the Most High, not knowing that two thirds of our people not knowing that, but but coming into knowledge of that and turning away from the Lord and not accepting that, you know, you're still rich because you have those promises, but the majority of our people are going to be destroyed because they're not going to accept that the Scriptures tell us that. Okay. So it says, like the brother saying, the rich sit in low places. Speaking about you Israelites, verse seven. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. And that was that that was the whole symbolization of that what the brother was talking about, which the elders and apostles went actually in New York City and showed that before on a few videos. I'm sure a lot of brothers have seen that. And that was real heavy because it, it, it showed that, you know, the nation of Israel being enslaved. Kind, because it says servants that were on horses. That's right. Because what it, the what was the uh, the blessing of Jacob, right. man? The, right. elder, the elder shall serve the younger. They, exactly. So mm -hmm. you know Esau is supposed to be our servant, man. That's and right. He's gonna be our servant in the kingdom of heaven, man. He's gonna be our slave. That's right. But, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and you know it said yeah. prince is walking. You know. Yep. And, you know. Uh, read that one more time. That's right. Walk, walk yourself, please. Ecclesiastes ten and seven. It says, "I have seen servants upon horses." Kind the Edomites. All right. Mm -hmm. They're really supposed to be servants, man. That's right. All right. So they see them servants in power. All right, that horse. That's okay. right. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. And princes, which we are, we are the princes. All right, nation of Israel, Yasha Allah. All right, Yah mean He, Shah mean Prince, Allah mean God. Our, our, our power, man. That's we right. Are, we are the princes of God. That's right. All right, we we were saw in chains as as servants, as slaves right. unto the actual servant, man. All right, yeah. which is Esau. Esau's supposed to be our servant, but we're serving him right now. All right, that's right. And walking on, he's walking on the earth. So you had Esau in, on the horse, mm -hmm. dragging us, man. All right, dragging us to do some work, man. That's right. To, to build up his kingdom, man. All that's right. right. That, that's what that that symbolism shows, and it shows you in America, man. In America, it shows you the symbolism of the scriptures, man. As the brother was going, um, uh, on uh, um, the point he was making. Yep. Hey, that's perfect. I got a precept for you, real quick. Um, this is Psalms 82 to, to, to land back on what the brother said about us being Yashar Allah. You know, we, we are the princes of the power. Here it is. Psalms 82 and 6. It says, I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. Kind. That's the land back on what the brother said. Kind. So you know we, <laughs> we're, the, we're the gods of the earth. You know, it's right. a lower case D. So, you know, the, 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 uh, we, we are uh, powers o o over this earth, man. That's right. All right, but we would die like princes because we didn't keep the law, statutes, commandments of the Heavenly Father, man. We are the princes of the uh, uh, of the Heavenly Father, man. We are, that's right. He, we are his sons, man. That's right. All right, so, you know, that's why I say it solves princes, the sons of the Most High, man. That's right. All right, us, the Israelites, walking... As, as servants, man. That's right. All right. So we were we were slaves, man. That's right. And we still are today, man. As we speak, and that's why we got got to have our big brother Yahweh Shai to liberate us, man. All that's right. right. The the elect of the nation of Israel, man. All right. To come get us and liberate us from this madness, man. That's right. I got one last script. I, and if you got anything else to add, you can. Just one last script is to go into the go into the part where it says, um, but uh, but but we are rich, Sorry. right? This is what we rich with. We were speaking about that. It's gonna be real quick. Revelation 2 and 9, it says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, because you Israelites are poor. You are impoverished. 
You know what I'm saying? You're living in poverty and, and you don't have your power. Come. But thou art rich. What are we rich with? The blessings, the promises, the laws, the statutes, the commandments, the kingdom of heaven. All that is for the Israelites and nobody else. In spirit, right? In spirit. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews or not, but they are the synagogue of Satan. So that Edomite that's sitting on that horse in New York City, you know, that 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 symbol that symbolization that that's actually blasphemy Fine. because they're not supposed to be in a position of power Fine. because they're supposed to be serving us and they will be serving us. But that that's what's powerful about that. And that's what's powerful about that scripture. And you said they call themselves Jews. You got mm -hmm. to add like the Amalekites over there. Mm -hmm. All right. Who, who are of the house of Edom, mm -hmm. calling themselves the Jews, is, that's blasphemy because that's right. they're, they're not. That's right. But also, on, on this side in America, you got the um, uh, the regular American, they don't call themselves the Jews, but they call nope. what they call themselves the people of God, right? That's right. All right? They, they, they held them up, they held themselves up as the Lord's chosen people, man. Right? right. You had, uh, they call themselves the, the Aryan race and some shit yeah. like that, you know, all exactly. that stuff. Calling them the purebred blood yeah. of, of right. you know, that's meant to be. That's more of the blasphemous. Yeah, yeah, that's going. Yeah, that's blasphemous, man. Because you're not, man. Yeah. All right, you're the valiest man on the earth, man. That's right. right. You, you, you're not supposed to be ruling at all, man. And matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna get this one script really fast. It's uh, in Psalms, uh, I believe is Psalms 12. Because what you ruling, um, you, you there's wick, all wickedness around, man. All right, this is Psalms 12 and 8. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest, when we, we went from the beginning lesson, this said America takes in the vilest people. Mm. All right, it takes in uh, um, That's right. the the, re the refugees, mm -hmm. all right, the the, uh, the exile, yep, all right. The poor, yeah. It says, the wicked shall, uh, it's, it's like it, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted, man. And in, in, in this place, the world that we uh, that we currently live in, wickedness is exalted, and the the men are who 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 rule this world are, are exalted. The wicked the wicked men are exalted, man. So right. like, wicked people will be around when wicked people are ruling, man. All right. right. So you know <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of wickedness uh, in the earth when wicked people are ruling. But right. hey, all that is about to change. But when our big brother Yahweh Shai right. makes his return, all right. That's right. Uh, uh, gathers the elect of the nation of Israel, and we take this king take the kingdom. By force, man. That's right. All, all of that wickedness is going to cease, man. And we're going to balance everything out to the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah Shah. That's right. That's right. We hope that lesson was edifying. Um, right. You know, before we close out, we want to give all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. We want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, right. the true and only teachers of Israel today. Right. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the 144,000, the house of David. Shalom. Shalom.